I mean, only if you spent your youth chewing on windowsills would you think that Mac Jones would not be the starter when he's good to go. I mean, if that's that's what you spent your time doing, you grew up under the electrical wires, good shot that you think there's a chance that Bailey Zappi starts with a full-go Mac Jones. Oh, well, that's phenomenal. Oh, my uh, God. Let's take a look at what? Burns' tweet during the game. Zappi up to 23 for 31 for 315 yards and two touchdowns on the road. His second career start despite a performance several levels above last week. Can't imagine Mac not getting the job back when healthy but the notion of zappy nipping at the heels of jones if it isn't locked in no longer laughable welcome into post game live presented by your new england four dealers and four trucks michael holly tommy kerr and matt castle Vita smith here with you in a convincing win by this patriots team 38 to 15 against the cleveland browns and current uh. I mean, what you said in that sound bite right there. Wow. At the I have seen the show. light. Chewing I on windows. Chewing on windows. Window I never, Electrical you know, wires. I've yeah, never heard of that before. I mean, after you've seen what Bailey Zappi has done in this game, have you changed your mind? I have changed my mind. It is, how surreal is it that after the sixth game of the season, we are straight-facedly conversing about the Mac Jones-Bailey Zappi equation? And I still think all things being equal, and they certainly have not been, that it will be Mac Jones' job. But now you actually can have a conversation if there is toe stubbage along the way or if he does not perform at a level against, say, for instance, the Chicago Bears in his next trip out, where you start to scrutinize his performance in a way you 100% mm -hmm. would not have in mm -hmm. other circumstances. I'm with you. I told you last week that the Bailey Zappi mac Jones conversation was embarrassing. It is no longer... No. An embarrassing conversation. Yes, he has played well as a backup and even a borderline starter. But beyond that, what, what, forget about Bailey Zappi's future. I think what this is, this is all about faith for the New England Patriots. You're one in three after a loss to Green Bay, and you tell your guys all the time, Matt Castle knows this, you tell, uh, knows this, you tell your guys all the time, next man up, even if it's the most important position, our season is not over. Everybody in this locker room is capable of doing the job. And players, until they see results, they say, okay, the coaches have to say that. But they come back, they shut off Detroit, and then they go on the road and beat a Browns team and beat them handily. And Bailey Zappi wasn't just a caretaker. Bailey Zappi, Matt Castle, made some big-time throws and some good decisions, quick decisions in this game. And he was a reason. He was a reason they won. He wasn't just, he wasn't just a, a, a bystander who happened to see a good victory. He helped make that happen. That's right. And I was so impressed with Bailey Zappi because, again, when we talked about this game in preseason, we said they're going to have to lean on the run game. This, this defense is terrible against the run. They're, that's what's going to set everything up. But when you watch this game and how it actually went, the run game was never really able to get started. They leaned on the passing game. Bailey Zappi made good decision after good decision. He was composed. He was poised. That's what's been most impressive about that. And then also, even the, the start at the, the first drive in the third quarter, to go down there, he saw the read. It's a quick hitter. It's a rub play. He gets off of it because it looks muddled. But what does he do? He doesn't panic, right? He gets to the Ty Tyquan Thornton coming across the back end line, hits him for a touchdown pass. I mean, throughout the course of the day, he made play after play. He never panicked. And that's the mark of a good quarterback. And like you guys said, I'm not worried about Mac Jones' job security right now. But when it does become a discussion point is if Mac Jones comes back into the lineup and this offense struggles, they're not able to get things going, then the rumbling start again. And everybody's talking, well, I don't know what's going on. I need to know the why. I need to know this. That's when it becomes an issue because Bailey Zappi has proven that not only can he win as a backup, but as a starter, He's gone out and performed extraordinarily well and improved from last week to this week. People have knee-jerk resistance to a conversation about a quarterback controversy. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of people embrace it, but I think a lot of people right. are like, no, 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 don't want to have that on your team, can't have that. If you've got two quarterbacks, you don't have any. Right. In this instance, because of the youth of the two players and because of the results that we're seeing and because of the buy-in that we didn't think might be present this year that clearly will be now, isn't it to the good to have this conversation and competition and discussion? Or is it bad to have a 
pseudo quarterback controversy. Well, I mean, you never want a quarterback controversy, and I think for everybody in that locker room but and the stability of, of the locker yeah. room, no, it's not, there's, it's, it's not a quarterback it's controversy. Not yet. not yet. Mac Jones is hurt, right? And that's why Bailey Zappi's on the field right now, and he's done an outstanding job of stepping in and going out and playing really well during that time period. But this is Mac Jones' job. This is Mac Jones' team, and he deserves that because of how he played throughout the course of last year. Early on, yes, he had his woes. He's had some turnovers. But at the end of the day, Still, I'm not, I haven't lost faith in Mac Jones. This is a small sample size of what we've seen of this team thus far. There's a lot of changes in the offseason. I think you've got to give this thing time to develop. I, would I, say, I haven't, I haven't yeah. lost faith in Mac Jones, but I listened to what Bill Belichick said, and we put the sound by in our pregame show. You asked, okay, is he going to be the starting quarterback once he comes back? And I know that you said, Matt, that Bill Belichick, he usually doesn't hint at whatever's happening when in, in terms of injury, but I would expect a more definitive answer from Bill Belichick. Now that Bailey mm-hmm. Zappi is playing well. Holly, who is the better quarterback in terms of which quarterback this team has a better chance of winning with? Because we saw at the beginning of the season, yeah. Mac Jones was out there throwing interceptions. We haven't seen that from Bailey Zappi as much. And we know the offense has been simplified, but which quarterback does this team have a better chance of winning with? I still think it's Mac Jones. Uh, this is, we identified this as soon as the schedule came out in May, mm-hmm. there was a difficult first four games. Mm-hmm. Some the cynical said one and three. You guys were right. The optimistic me said <laughs> two and two. I was wrong. But I thought those first four games, if they could survive, I kept saying it. You have to survive those first four games, and then you get to a favorable part of the schedule. That's where we are now. Mm-hmm. That's what Bailey Zappi's been able to take advantage of, and Mac Jones hasn't seen it yet. The real controversy, and I agree with Matt Castle on this, the controversy comes not if – uh, Mac Jones comes back against the Bears. If he plays against the Bears and struggles, still not a controversy. If he struggles and they lose, okay, now. Now there's a controversy because Zappi is undefeated as a starter. And if you can't win games, that's when the conversations and the rumble, rumbling start to happen. Okay, wait a minute. We were doing just fine. And there will be no patience. Where's this? What's this? What, what, what do we have now? Mm-hmm. There, there will be no patience for, ugh, he was trying to knock the rust off. You know, but see, that's what I feel like right. the conversation would be. That but if you can be Mac rusty Jones, if they if, win. If they win and he's rusty, fine. Mm-hmm. But if they lose and he's rusty, right, right, then okay. it's not right. Because yeah. that's what I'm thinking about. I'm like, okay, if Mac Jones goes out and he does play against the Bears next week and this team does lose, in my mind, the first thing I think of is the fact that he hasn't really been practicing, that it is his first go out there since having the high ankle sprain. So, Curran, I mean, how do people look at that? Do they give him a little bit of grace if he comes out there and struggles against a Bears team that we all know is just – flat out not good right now. We know the most vocal people will be the ones who are dubbed the majority, but they won't be. I think most normal, observant, reasonable and rational football fans would say, well, he's knocking the rust off. He's, you know, a first-round pick out of Alabama. He's got a year in the league. Um, He's played against more difficult teams. He went through this entire transition. Give him some time. I understand he didn't look that great and Zappi looked fine, but they were not hitting against the same pitchers during the the portion Mm -hmm. of time they were out there. So I think that there will be that grace. But what ends up happening is the noise, the noise, the noise, the noise Mm. does start to infiltrate and infest the locker room. Right. I'll say this, and people have made this comparison many times when I say I can't imagine it happening. They're like, they can't imagine it. Didn't, weren't you covering the team in 2001 when Bledsoe lost his job to Brady? Listen, Drew Bledsoe was ripe for the picking. Despite that $103 million contract, the team had gone 5-13 and with him a quarterback in the previous Uh, 18 games. They were 0-2. He was coming off one of the worst, most disgraceful performances he ever had in New England the week he got hurt against the Jets. That's right. And Brady had been outstanding Mm -hmm. that entire summer. Brady was a better player then, more experienced, bigger, um, and had a better resume having gone to Michigan than Bailey Zappi out of Western Kentucky. These are not apples to apples. Mac Jones is not ripe for the picking. Mm. Right. I know we're saying right now that there isn't a quarterback controversy between Bailey Zappi and Mac Jones, but Matt, from a quarterback perspective, I know you have to hear that conversation on the outside. How does that affect that quarterback room? Yeah, we always talk about blocking out the noise. And when you talk about the quarterback room, a lot of people don't understand how much time we spend together, right? Mm. We are with each other through more than what we see our family throughout the course of a season. And so there, there can be some tension with certain guys based on personality. I don't see that happening here. And at the same time, you have to be mentally tough. We talk about blocking out the noise. And a lot of times when you're in a situation like this, look, this is a performance-based league. There, You put pressure on yourself, the organization, just all, all the elements that come along with playing this position. You feel that on a consistent basis. But what's the best thing you can do is go out and perform well. And this is what I'm saying. When you talk about 
grace period. If you're healthy enough to be out in the field, nobody gives you grace in this league. So maybe they don't Mac, care if you're banged so maybe up. Mac they don't care if you're yeah. it, it, it is. You have to go out and win ball games, and everything else takes care of themselves. Uh, Were you care involved? Of itself. Were you involved in any of those quarterback situations in your time in Kansas City when things, you know, 27 touchdowns, seven pick season Pro Bowl, and then you had some difficult times as well? Was there ever a time that you were involved in where it became awkward, contentious, divisive among your team when they were saying, well, let's get Castle out of there? Well, I, you, there has to be. When you go to my fourth season in Kansas City, we had Romeo Cornell took over as the head coach. Todd Haley got fired the year before. Brady Quinn came in as an experienced backup. And I'm sitting there, and we were struggling early in the season. I, I wasn't playing the, to my, the best of my abilities. I had some turnover issues early on. We were coming from behind all those different situations. Then I get knocked out with a concussion against the Baltimore Ravens. And I, I had to sit out a week. Brady Quinn goes out there, plays well. And it's a difficult circumstance because you're sitting there, you're talking about, one, job security and all that, well, they decide to go with Brady Quinn to start the next game, and I had to sit there on the sideline. He gets knocked out in the first quarter. I happen to go back in and get the job back. But, again, it's difficult circumstances to keep yourself mentally into it, not, not get frustrated and take it out on everything. You uh, get pissed when you have the conversation? You get pissed, absolutely. No, no, sorry. Yeah. No, I, I would say I would, I'd imagine it's, it's human nature takes over as well. One, you're a competitor, you're a good teammate. So, mm -hmm. You want to see everything go well. You want to see your team be successful. On the flip side, you, you're a human being, and you don't want to think that – everyone to think that I'm the problem. Right. And so you're rooting for your team, but if things start to work for that guy that didn't work for you, everybody looks and says, okay, yeah, he was. The, that other quarterback was the problem, and we need to stick with this guy. And I, I wonder if that's what's go going on right now with Mac Jones, where he sees 38 points today. 38 points against the Browns. I know it's against the Browns, but 38 against them. We keep saying 20, that after every team they beat. And, you know, but, but still, okay. <laughs> We're not predicting they're going to lose. <laughs> and, and look, hey, the Steelers aren't great, but they put up 17 against the Steelers. So they go from 17, then they put up, you know, was it 24 against the Packers, and they put up 29 against the Lions. The number keeps going up. Now it's 38 uh, against the Browns, and you're winning games. I think at the very least, I don't think Mac Jones's job is in jeopardy. At the very least, He's probably looking at those coaches saying, okay, uh, they've gained some credibility too. Maybe there are some things I didn't agree with, but apparently it does work for somebody. It means when I get back in there, maybe I have to have a different approach to how I deal with these, uh, these coaches. So, Curran, really quickly, is it the offense that's getting better when you talk about the coaching staff on the sidelines, or are we just looking at Bailey Zappi week after week and him in this, and him in this position getting better, just kind of standing in for both, Matt Jones? Both. I think okay. that the, the coaching staff now is so much further beyond where they were in week one and in the summer. The offensive line was a disgrace in the opener. Mm -hmm. um, they've improved. Obviously, Zappi's Zappi had an opportunity to show arm strength today that I wasn't positive he had. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's off the charts, but right. I think it's not that far from Mac Jones. Pretty good fastball. Good fastball. 90? 91? But <laughs> more importantly, yeah. uh, to me, it's his decision-making. It's his accuracy. Like, and, and what he does when the pocket broke down, he was able to get outside the pocket, not take the sack, throw the ball away. Those are things that are hard to teach a young quarterback in, in those situations of not panicking. And the other part about this, I, I think – Bailey Zappi deserves a ton of credit, but the way that this team is playing also, mm -hmm. how the game's being called by Matt Patricia, the third and one call to Hunter Henry to set up that touchdown, the aggressiveness in which they displayed, not saying, hey, we're going to try to pound it in here for one yard. We're going to take our shot. There was another one, first and 10 of that same drive. They go play action, hit Jacoby Myers on that nice bow route or out route, is what, however you want to describe it. But the way in which they're calling this game, the jet sweeps for the touchdown. The third and 10. The, the third, third and 10 of Ramondre Stevens. 10, you off yep. balance, they're expecting pass. They run the inside zone. It breaks for a touchdown as well. So there is some success here, and they're also starting to figure out how he wants to formulate the game plan and actually call the game plan. It's also a game situation. Mm -hmm. yeah. The way you get to run the game, Amina, when, mm -hmm. the, when, the game, when you're rolling downhill and compiling a lead or beating the hell out of Jared Goff or – you know, getting pick sixes as you did against the Packers yeah. or scooping scores, it, it all makes a difference.